what game should you play? Which chip should you use? This question is actually quite difficult to answer. The main issue is that everyone plays different games, so it's hard to generalize. If we only test Genshin Impact and Honor of Kings, people just glance at the results and move on, and it doesn't really showcase the true differences between these chips in actual gaming scenarios. So this video will be a bit different. Drawing on a large amount of real world data from our Yai Lab test, we selected several popular models for each chip, used the truncated mean method to remove the highest and lowest value from the data, and calculated the most representative per frame power consumption during gameplay. We tried our best to eliminate differences caused by manufacturer optimizations and chip architectures so we can see the specific gaps between different platforms in actual gaming. Before we begin, it's important to note that all game tests were conducted using the highest graphic settings and in demanding scenarios, which better represent the lower limit of the gaming experience. All right, now let's look at the data. In Genshin Impact, the four latest flagship chips require about 4.6 to 4.8 watts to run at 60 frames per second. For a more intuitive comparison, the power consumption per frame shows that the Dimensity 9400 performs just a tiny bit better. There are very limited actual devices equipped with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and Apple A18 Pro, so we'll just use them as a simple reference here. But actually, it's not hard to draw a conclusion. These top tier chips are indeed roughly on the same level, and all of them can handle Genshin Impact's highest graphic settings in Natlon quite easily. The previous generation flagship chips, namely the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and Dimensity 9300, can also run Genshin Impact Natlon at 810p with full performance, easily achieving nearly full frame rate. However, there is a rather clear difference between these two chips. The Dimensity 9300 has overall lower power consumption, and its per frame power usage shows a significant advantage in demanding scenarios like Genshin Impact. Looking at specific models, most brands can achieve a satisfactory frame rate. However, some models that aren't specifically geared towards gaming or are not well optimized do show some noticeable fluctuations, such as this model with frame drops down to 123 FPS. It's worth mentioning here that although the Dimensity 9300 and 9300 Plus perform better in demanding games like Genshin Impact, there aren't many new products on the market equipped with large silicon carbon anode batteries, so the range of choices is quite limited. Here, you really need to carefully consider the new devices, namely the Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 and the Dimensity 8348S. On this side, there are only three devices available, and one of them is a trendy flagship focused on being slim and lightweight. Um, it's not really suitable to include it in the comparison, and the other two models have significant differences in resolution. Here, I'll just present the data briefly, and you can take a closer look yourself. If we only look at the power consumption per frame, mid-range chips can even perform as well as last generation flagships. If you only play games under moderate stress, a new mid-range chip can also be a good choice. Next, in Honkai Star Rail, you'll be able to see the real difference. Here, the test is run at 1080p golden moment setting. In this simulated extreme scenario, the power consumption becomes extremely high. Both the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and Dimensity 9300 require power levels in the 7 watt range, which is much higher than the vast majority of games. Modes like Juex Zero or Ming Dynasty stress test are nowhere near as demanding as Golden Moment, which can be considered representative of the upper limit of mobile gaming performance requirement. All three chips are no longer handling it with ease, fluctuations in frame drops have started to appear. Only a few gaming phone models with higher upper limits are able to maintain an average frame rate of 60. As for the device equipped with the Shuangji Un, the Xiaomi 15S Pro is not positioned as a performance or gaming phone, so its tuning is relatively conservative. However, if you look at the power consumption per frame, it still delivers an excellent performance. Generally, all three Threen chips require about 120 to 130 milliwatts per frame. In contrast, last generation flagships require 140 to 160 milliwatts, which is a significant difference. Considering the device's heat dissipation and actual frame rates, I can only say the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and Dimensity 9300 have really done their best on those devices, can barely achieve frame rates above 50 anymore. The two iPhones equipped with the A18 Pro and the two new mid-range chips have not yet been adapted for higher resolutions in Honkai, Star Rail, so their data cannot be directly compared with the figures above. Although the iPhone's per-frame power consumption is on par with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and Dimensity 9300, and it even benefits from Apple's exclusive metal API, the issue clearly isn't here. Even the latest iPhone 16 Pro Max doesn't use the vapor chamber cooling that's already common on Android devices, but instead relies on a combination of a thermal film and an aluminum plate. At a room temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, its maximum heat dissipation capacity is only about 5.5 watts. On the Android side, the heat dissipation can generally reach over 7 watts, and some gaming specialized models can even achieve 9 watts. For the A18 Pro chip, running just one game might only be considered a warm-up, but our aluminum plate cooling is already close to its limit. In more CPU-intensive scenarios, such as decisive Zone Zero battles and running around in the light and shadow plaza, the situation becomes even more pronounced. The All World OE stands out even more thanks to its two high-frequency super-large cores, easily taking first place overall. An overall score of 894 and 9400 are basically on the same level. The iPhone 16 Pro Max also shines on its home turf, achieving 55 frames per second at 942p with only about 5.5 watts, which is very impressive. As for the iPhone 16 Pro, it's clear that it's still plagued by the old issue of thermal limitations, and older flagships generally perform poorly in Jazz Ring. Now the answer is clear. In medium and ultra-high load games, the 8000 and 90 and 9000, 400 only need to use 70% or even less of the power consumption of the previous generation chips to achieve higher frame rate. In Basins 4 in the neighborhood, it has significantly surpassed the Dimensity 8300. It seems that in these relatively more CPU-intensive scenarios, the 8S Gen 4 still holds a clear advantage. As for Honor of Kings, actually all devices can achieve pretty good frame rates, and the differences aren't that significant. Relatively speaking, the Dimensity 9300 and Exynos models perform a bit better here, as shown by their lower temperatures compared to the other devices, making them more suitable for long gaming sessions. To sum up, considering the overwhelming performance of the Dimensity 9300 and its recent price drops, the idea of good enough is enough that we often talk about might not be very appropriate at this point in time. 
The new chips not only deliver more stable frame rates, but also significantly lower power consumption and device temperatures. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 offers even better value for money, and the new mid-range chips, thanks to their all-big core architecture, also achieve impressive energy efficiency. In some scenarios, they even outperform the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and are more than capable of handling most games. As for choosing a device, although this video does not showcase specific models, generally speaking, products that focus on gaming tend to offer better performance, both online and offline. They also generally come with bonus features like super resolution upscaling, physical trigger buttons, and bypass charging, making them even more suitable for hardcore gamers. That's all for this video. Please follow, like, save, and share. This is YLab, I'm Sharan, and I'll see you in the next episode.